We are 13 days out from Olympia, a week out from leaving, uh, and I'm having quite a big car walk. So yesterday and today, yesterday and today, we were having huge amounts of carbs, so over double the amount every meal. Uh, just because I've came in a bit too quick and we're at that stage of being very close to being catabolic uh, and that is not good when you're two weeks out from the Olympia so just uh, refilling back up yesterday I put two pounds back on I woke up this morning two pounds heavier uh, from yesterday's car walk and we've got one more day of that and if you haven't noticed we're in the new house <laughs> um, so yeah this is the second day of moving into the new house so it's been absolutely mental, I must admit. It's uh, the last two weeks. I'd say the last 18 months has been pretty stressful, but the last two weeks um, of moving into the new house, trying to get everything ready, and trying to get the, my other house ready for renting, as well as prepping for the Olympia, uh, has been pretty crazy. But we're finally there. Uh, we moved in yesterday, and uh, obviously it's very bare still. Uh, we've still got a lot of furniture to fill up, but, we're immensely proud of it and we're glad to be in it now. After 18 months, it's a bit surreal. So there you have it, my pre-training meal courtesy of Muscle Food. So um, yeah, I've been getting my meats off them for the last few years. Most of my preps in the UK have um, been supported by Muscle Food. So yeah, 200 grams of chicken breast, 200 grams of white rice and just lettuce, iceberg lettuce. I know everyone's going to cringe at this, but this is what I always use, uh, soya sauce. I like to have high sodium throughout my prep. Um, obviously, on game day, I basically cut it out uh, about 12 hours before and just helps with um, dropping water retention, uh, getting water from under the skin. And that's what I, I believe makes me that slightly bit drier uh, on the stage. Uh, you can go too far when people think they need to uh, massive sodium load in peak week. Um, I have 10, 12 liters of water and then cut it out for two days. It's just drastic, you don't need that. Like I say, I have an increase in sodium throughout my diet and then I decrease. I still have sodium on the day, but just little amounts. Uh, my body recognizes it's not as much and, and draws the water out. So we've got two scoops, BCA glutamine blend. That's my intra workout. We've got my pre which again is two, <coughs> two scoops of 10 grams of wax I got on my chest. That's out outside of that. Midway through a car bump, you saw what I was eating a minute ago. So yeah, I'm um, a bit fluffy at the minute, should we say. Just trying to fill back up, but yeah, we peaked a bit too soon. So last Wednesday, so three or four days ago, um, very dry, very lean, but it was too soon, obviously two weeks out. We're trying to slow that process down for another two weeks.
189.3. So like I said, we're flying out to Vegas tomorrow, so we have got my final card readings. Uh, excited to see where we're at with this, because the last couple of weeks we've been fluctuating with uh, refeeds. Uh, my weight's been going up and down because of that. Uh, so I want to see what my final reading is before we head out. So this was probably what I'm going to step on stage around. Obviously I will drop weight when I um, dry out the, the day before, but at the same time I'm going to be carving up. So we are going to be roughly around this weight uh, in a week's time on stage. That's it. Let's get the results. We are one day from leaving for Las Vegas. Can't believe we're here already. Uh, excited, nervous. But we're in the new house and I'm looking forward to getting out to Vegas now and smashing peak week. So just want to show you quickly what I'm going to be consuming whilst I'm traveling over there. So we've got salmon fillet, which I've cooked off already. A lot of chicken, which I've cooked off and fillet steak. My vegetable sauce is going to be iceberg lettuce, just because you can eat it cold and obviously traveling 10 hours on a flight. For me, it's the best source of greens cold. Uh, and I've enjoyed it and I've had it all on prep, so I'm not changing anything or deviating away from what my body and my digestive system has been used to for the past 16 weeks. My complex carbs are gonna be rice. I've uh, eaten that all the way through. I normally vary between white rice, sweet potato, and uh, oats. White potato. And white potato as well, yeah. But this prep, I don't know, I found I haven't got bored of rice. It's the easiest digesting on my stomach, uh, and it's quick and simple to cook. You know, trying to do all different things, it just gets boring, doesn't it? So, cook my rice off in one go, and we're sorted. So, we, we are gonna be uh, lower in carbs, because we're traveling, one, obviously not training, two, long haul, so I don't wanna be taking too many carbs in. Obviously, water retention on the flight anyway is not great. Putting carbs in there is gonna inflate it even more. So, we're gonna try and keep the carbs low, Fat's high and a lot of water intake, so we're going to be up into around eight litres of water whilst travelling over. Um, and yeah, once we get to land in America, I'll get sorted, try and get the water retention off and uh, start peak week strong over there. But just wanted to give you a little insight really into what I'll be consuming whilst travelling to America. Right, hello guys. Um, so we're going to do this quite informal, but in a post I did a few days ago on my Instagram, I said I was going to do some Q&As. Um, I've never done this before, uh, so I'm going to make up as I go along. Um, I've had a lot of people messaging, so thank you for taking the time to all of you. Anyone who wrote um, a question and, and commented on my pictures. Um, so let's get straight into it and we'll see if I can answer some of the questions. So the first one is from a guy called at Rye Rigby. Do you believe the division is going the wrong way in terms of guys' size and do you think they should put a weight limit like Classic? To be honest, I get this asked quite a lot and for me, I do feel like we are pushing boundaries now and I think we definitely, definitely passed and exceeded what men's physique should have been about. Um, when it first came out, the division came out, it was that attainable beach body front cover of a fitness magazine look um, and what we've got in the top 50 in the world now is very much past that is uh, is very hard dry uh, pushing it into to bodybuilding classic bodybuilding uh, and some of the guys in, in, in the top top 10 in the world can't make their weight in classic so i do feel it should change um, me personally, it would benefit me better if it did because I, um, I'm not one of the bigger guys on stage and I, and I struggle to, to hold mass amounts of weight. So for me, I always focus on condition and tr try to be as aesthetic as I can, as pleasing as I can on stage uh, because I'll never win the size game. So if the division went that way, I think um, it would be brilliant. <laughs> Give me a better shot. Uh, but is that me just being selfish? And it is only my point of view. How do you deal with cravings and cheats? So this is from at Sai underscore Rossi 1812. Uh, to be honest with you, I've, I've been doing it quite a while now. Obviously, I've, I've been a, competing for about 10 years. Um, and for me personally, I don't really crave anything because I eat quite clean all year. Um, I enjoy, sadly, prep food. I just 
I, uh, from my off season and my on season, I just add more calories, more uh, of that food. So I'll increase my, my fats and my carbs and then add sauces and stuff to it to make it not as bland. But um, I have the odd cheat from time to time, not on prep, but I'll, I'll have um, meals with the family or if it's a special occasion or at weekends with a new on date night. Um, but not enough to, to binge on it and for my body to get too used to it. So when I'm dieting, I don't really crave anything as such, but I do crave more quantity. How do you keep balance in your life? Uh, that's from a guy called at Farry Boz RF. So I'm sorry if I got that wrong, but um, bodybuilding is a very, very, very selfish sport. You have to train, you have to eat, you have to sleep, all of that comes first um, before a social life and before family members. So um, it can be quite difficult, but I've, I've learned over the years with Amy that as long as you, you give time to the relationship um, and you can adapt to any situation, you can go out on a night out and not have to drink and have a good time. You can go to posh restaurants and have steak, rice and vegetables. You, you can eat clean on the way out and stuff. So, And if you can't, you just... Um, Factor that into your, your daily routine or have that as your cheat or refeed um, day when you're in prep or something. But I, I try to find a balance in that and, and try to think about others around me. And if I'm feeling mardy or tired and a bit, bit aggy, then I have to sit back and think, would I be doing that if I wasn't on prep? Would I be pissed off with this person if I wasn't hungry and starving and tired. So that's when I try and take myself out of that situation, go and give my head a shake and uh, come back and reassess it. How is your mindset? So this is from Christian Oliarez. Uh, how has your mindset changed over the years at Mr. Olympia? And what advice do you have for guys entering their first competition? Um, so for me, this is my fifth year going into Olympia. Um, and my mindset has changed over the years because your life changes and, and things change within your life. I, I'm now married, uh, we're looking to hopefully start a family next year. Um, I would like to have more of a social life. I've, I've done very well in bodybuilding and it's been very good to me, the sport, uh, but I've had to sacrifice so much. Um, and I'm very proud of, of where I'm at and my new home, uh, which is, has been uh, earned through bodybuilding and stuff, but it, it can be very, very um, lonely at times because you have to sacrifice a lot uh, day in day out training and uh, missing family friends events and stuff so um, my outlook has changed because in the early days it was like I don't care that's all I want that's all I'm gonna do and I was very selfish and that's that was my way of, of building my career to where it is whereas now I am thinking more about family I'm thinking about things past um, past the bodybuilding world. Uh, but I'll always, always have a massive love and yeah, respect for the sport and I will still keep pushing. Like for me as a competitor, I, I'll never lose that competitive edge. Like anyone who's stepped on stage or um, is a, it is competitive in a, in a, a sport, you, you never lose it. You always have that itch. You always want to be the best. And for me, my dream is to be the best in the world. So. I still haven't achieved that yet. I was second in 2016 by a point, but it's still not good enough. It's, it's okay, but it's not first. So I think until I hold that Olympia title, um, I will still have that drive and have that passion to, to be at my best and, and to try and do well, <laughs> to be number one. Ricky Brody Fitness, and it says, what's your biggest struggle during your prep and what's the thing you love the most about your prep? So the biggest struggle would be not being able to spend the quality time with Amy like I do when we're off season. So to be able to go away for the weekend, not have to think about training, not have to think about hitting my macros um, and just having a drink if we want, eating whenever we want um, and having that relaxed approach of, of going away for the weekend, a spontaneous uh, weekend away, whereas we, we can't do that, like that's just not possible for four months of the year when I'm prepping for a show. So that is something I do miss. Uh, and the thing I love uh, most about you prep is seeing the change, is working towards something and feeling like you're accomplishing something. Like I've lost 26 pounds on this prep, um, and I'm, 
I've done it in a, in a such a way where I've lost over the four months, I've probably lost 1.6, I think we worked out in muscle mass. So that 20, 24 and a half pounds of pure fat, I just, it, to me, mind boggling and, and I absolutely love it when you, when you talk about the science of it all and how you can do that to your body. Um, and obviously the change, you feel more confident. Yes, you're tired and, and fatigued and hungry, but to see you push your body to its limits and to, to get in that zone and to, I don't know, at the end of it, see what you've accomplished. I think uh, I, I love that more than anything. And stepping on that stage, especially the Olympia stage, it's just a oh, dream come true to me, dream come true. And yeah, it's just an, an amazing feeling. I'm gonna answer one more because I'm rab rabbiting on here and this uh, YouTube video is gonna go on forever. Um, so, by the way, thank you for all the positive comments, like saying all the, the well wishes and good looks and all that kind of stuff, because I do try and read them, uh, and I do read them because I'm, I'm liking them all to, to show that I've acknowledged them, but I do, honestly, I go through it, take the time, and it, and it does give you that boost, especially when you're having rough days where you're not motivated, I just come on here and have a look at these comments, and uh, yeah, nine times out of ten, it pulls me through. Or A5H underscore P, <laughs> do you reverse diet out of your prep? So, I, I would advise reverse dieting out of prep. I know it's very difficult, especially if you're in the early days of your competing, that you crave all these things on prep it's the first time you've restricted your body from this, this sugary foods and fatty foods. So post-show, the first thing you want to do is think of all the foods you're going to eat. The problem with that is your body is so finely tuned at that point and you, you've fed it the, the most organic, fresh, like clean sources of food for however long you've prepped, to then go and overload it with complete shit, uh, you're gonna mess your digestive system, you're gonna get uh, gut problems and it's gonna wreak havoc, honestly. I've done it once in a show and I was backed up for weeks and I had bad wind, I bloated stomach, I couldn't go to the toilet and then when I did it was horrendous um, and it's just not worth it and all that, that that fine tuning and then to look your best, to then just wipe it out in a, in a week, uh, I just think it's insane. So reverse dieting, I, I kind of do it, uh, but it's not controlled. That's the one thing I would say. Don't go straight into a regimented reverse diet prep because you've just done that for four months or for 12 weeks, however long you've prepped. You've been so strict counting every calorie to then, once you've done the end game, i.e. stepping on stage, photo shoot, whatever you've done, to then go back into counting calories, you're gonna burn out and it's gonna become a job and a chore and that's when it doesn't be part, it's not part of, of everyday life, it's, good. it's you're gonna blow out and burn out. So for me personally, I would start to keep eating the foods you eat um, because your body's used to it, but just have bigger portions, start adding sources to it and just get let your body adapt to it slowly. I'm not saying don't go out and have a burger and chips because you've earned it. If that's what you want, then you, you go out and do that. But just not every day, like a couple of days of that and um, you'll be fine. Your body won't even register. You won't even put body fat on because your metabolism's through the roof at that point. So it's just being sensible with your food portions. Don't go from one extreme to the other, but just come out of it nice and then try to make the most of your rebound. Because if, if you've not won for the the sheer fact that you need to improve on a muscle part or you need to get bigger, that is the perfect time to try and make those improvements. So you, you get your, make the most of your rebound. So eat clean, get enough protein in, uh, enough calories in, in order to, um, to aid those gains. And you get that anabolic window straight after, um, after um, competing and being so low. Be productive with it, make the most of it, um, and, and that's what I would say. So, uh, yeah, I'll stop blabbering on because I'm boring you, but hope the, uh, the questions have, uh, I've answered have helped you a little bit and you've taken something from it. Um, I'm going to say good night because it is getting late here and I've got a flight to catch in the morning to Vegas because we have got a job to do next Saturday. We are in Vegas competing at the Mr. Olympia for the fifth time. And I promise you guys, I'm going to try, you know, I'm going to bring that title back to the UK. I, I, oh, what it would mean to me. But anyway, done everything I can. I'm happy with where we're at. My, my team around me are happy. 
We've just got to get out of there and finish what we started. So um, thank you for watching this. I really appreciate all your support and I'll check in with you stateside closer to the Olympia. Cheers guys.